I offer this morning's Mass for Jim Hoppian. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear friends, we gather this morning to offer our praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God so that we might do this well. Let us now pause to place ourselves in the presence of our loving and merciful God. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Shalmezer, king of Assyria, occupied the whole land and attacked Samaria, which he besieged for three years. In the ninth year of Hosha, king of Israel, the king of Assyria took Samaria and deported the children of Israel to Assyria, settling them in Hala at the harbor, a river in Gosen, and the cities of the Medes, this came about because the children of Israel sinned against the Lord their God, who had brought them up from the land of Egypt and from the domination of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and because they venerated other gods. They followed the rights of the nations whom the Lord has cleared out of the way of the children of Israel and the kings of Israel whom they had set up. And, through, and, though, and though the Lord warned Israel and Judah by every prophet and seer, Give up your evil ways and keep the commandments and statutes in accordance with the entire law which I enjoined on your fathers, whom I have sent you by servants, the prophets. They did not listen, but were stiff-necked as their fathers, who had not believed in the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes, the covenant which he had made with their fathers, and the warnings which he had given them till in his anger against Israel." The Lord put them out of his sight. Only the tribe of Judah was left. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. O God, you have rejected us and broken our defenses. You have been, you have been angry, rally us. Help us with your right hand, O Lord and answer us. You have rocked the country and split it open, repaired the cracks in it, for it is tottering. You have made your people feel the hardships. You have given us stupefying wine. <clears throat> Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Have not you, O God, rejected us so that you go not forth, O God, with your armies? Give us aid without the, against the foe, for worthless is the help of men. Help us with your right hand, O Lord, and answer us. Alleluia, alleluia. The word of God is living and effective, able to discern reflections and thoughts of the hearts. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Stop judging, that you may not be judged. For as you judge, so will you be judged, and the measure with which you measure will be measured out to you. 
Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me remove that splinter from your eye while the wooden beam is in your eye? You hypocrites, remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter from your brother's eye. The Gospel of the Lord. The problem with the critic is that he adds nothing to the conversation besides enmity and hard feeling. One of the um, one of the lessons I was taught early when I entered the work world, and my first boss taught me this: that don't bring me a problem unless you're willing to provide me with some solution. And I try to live by that mantra. And I I recognize in myself that I develop that bad vice of judgment and expressing my opinion when no opinion has ever been solicited. And I think the gospel asks us to reflect upon our own life and our own actions. That when we're face to face with a situation that we do not like, what is our natural tendency and what is our natural reaction? Do we come upon that situation and cast judgment right away and express an opinion when none has been asked for? And if we find that we are confronted with that particular vice in our life, the virtue that we want to cultivate is the virtue of mercy. So how do we go about cultivating that virtue of mercy? Well, first of all, in order to show mercy and in order to act mercifully, one needs to experience mercy in one's life. Right? It's the old adage, one cannot give what one does not have. And so if we find that we're constantly judging and giving opinion, then a reflection that we might want to take upon ourselves is, have I experienced mercy in my life? Is that lacking in my life? And so an easy and obvious thing is, have I experienced God's mercy in my life? Right? Have I experienced the mercy of other people, particularly among my friends and family in my life? Well, God's mercy, that's easy. Right? To celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation on a regular basis. Right? We, because we preach And we say that we believe in a merciful God. But have we experienced God's mercy in a profound way in our life? Do we regularly come to that sacrament of reconciliation in in which we live in a practical way God's mercy shown upon us and just not some abstract theological concept. And then having experienced that mercy, you know, pray to God and ask God, Lord, now that I experience your mercy, help me. Help me to show that mercy and to express that mercy and to dispense that mercy to other people. So my friends, the Lord asks us to carefully discern today what is our natural inclination are we naturally prone to judgment or to mercy and if that's the case that you know Lord I need more mercy in my life the Lord is 
ready, willing, and able to, uh, to disperse that mercy upon us. All we have to do is ask. Trusting in God's care and concern for us, let us now offer to God our Father our needs. We pray for our Holy Father Francis, for our Bishop Bernard, and all those whom God has called to leadership in the church, that they may be open to the promptings of God's Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our government and civil leaders, those whom God has trusted to exercise authority over us, that they may exercise that authority with wisdom and prudence, we pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations of priesthood and religious life, that those whom God has called might respond generously, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are sick with the virus, for their caregiver, and for all those who mourn their passing, we pray to the Lord. We lift up to the Lord this day our beloved dead, especially our friends and family members, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, you know our needs and desires before we give voice to them. Hear the prayers of your people who cry out to you in our needs. Strengthen us in your everlasting goodness. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offerings of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts, prepare them for reconciliation. Even now, by your Spirit, you move the human hearts that enemies may speak to one another again, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge give way to forgiveness, discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of angels, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. 
He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation that Christ has brought us, we entreat you, O Lord, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfilled when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us to one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. 
you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder again, um, we'll distribute communion after Mass, so please sanitize your hands and then to please keep your hands as flat and as stationary as possible. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth to seek love and serve our Lord Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful week, everyone.